All right guys, what's up? I used to have subs in my truck in high school. And so finally, it's been a goal of mine to get another stereo in my truck. This is my baby, it's a 2022 F350 King Ranch long bed. My phone started jumping, what a day. Swear to God I need it, now I can't afford to wait. I just had a fan hit me up from Kuwait. Told him this would happen and we not a minute late. Long bed. And I've put 40,000 miles on it in the past few years. That may not be a lot to some of you, but I spend a lot of time in my truck. And so I've always loved bass. I wanted some more. And Nate reached out from Amp. Amp is a parent company to Stinger Off-Road, as well as Audio Control and a couple other companies. So he can tell you more about that. But we have two 12s with a custom box that we had made with an 800 watt amp. And today we are getting a... Uh, a stereo back in my truck. I'm trying to do a really clean install on this job. So we've got a lot of little goodies we're working on and parts and wiring and this and that. And so on today's episode, we're gonna show you all of that and what we're doing. The only crappy part about shooting a video about subs in a stereo is you really can't hear it in a video. Like it just, you can never really hear a lot of bass. So I'll try and mess with the audio level so you can hear a little bit better, but we're leaving the entire stereo stock except for the subwoofers. So. Let's get this thing dialed in, put in real clean, and uh, it's gonna go underneath the back seat. Right. What are we working with here today, Nate? We're working with an LC1800i. Good sub amp, 800 watts, more than that really actually. We got the Spike 12s, just came out this year. 500 watts RMS. And these are, are we gonna be running for two ohm? Is that two what we're doing? Okay. For this amp, it's gonna get the max potential out of them. Okay, awesome. So. This thing is gonna get down and get low for you. <laughs> That's what we're the hoping for. Is be loving. So you are with AMP, right? And so you guys also work with, or you're kind of the parent company of Stinger. So what are we doing with Stinger today? So we're using Stinger wiring all the way around. Um, so your fuse block, Stinger, four gauge, X-Link, X-Kit, actually. The best that we actually offer to our customers as well as that's about it, actually, for Stinger right there. It's just the wiring is to be all Stinger. One thing, one thing I did notice was I, I was talking to Nate. I'm like, hey, do we need an inline output converter? And if you guys don't know what that is, basically you have to tap into your speaker wires to provide the sub-amp with the signals for the audio. But how, you said that this amp has one already built in, It has right? built in and also has what's called our patented AccuBase, which in your truck, when you get up louder, you probably know it's you lose bass output. Yeah. This will restore your bass output, providing a good, clean bass for you. Okay, cool. So we've got those two features already built into the amp. So all we need to do is we've got the stock truck amp back here for the stereo. We're going to tap into some speaker wires there, run those to the amp. We're running our power wire right now back through the floor. And we're going to run, he's got this special amp mount bracket that's going to sit right here between these seat bolts. We also had to do a two and a half inch, or is it two inch? Two and a half inch. Yeah seat lift. So back seats can be sitting up a little higher. You can get these brackets. I'll put a link in the description for all of these parts and pieces where you can get them. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. Let's get to it. We have to hook up a power wire to go from the battery to the amp. And on these super duties, there is a fuse panel here coming off the battery, which supplies things like the upfitter switches, the starter, and the upfitter switches already have a built-in amp fuse. I think it's either 175 or 200 amps. So I'm just going to connect my power wire to this one, and then we'll run it back. And going through the truck, trying to squeeze the power wire through the firewall would be really difficult. There's so much stuff underneath the dash and you know behind the engine on these diesel trucks that I actually bought one of these firewall bulkheads from Maven Performance. And I'll put a link in the description below, but it's this really nice quick disconnect that I put underneath the passenger seat. And so this is where my power wire is gonna come through the body instead of trying to fish it through a rubber grommet up underneath the firewall. So we'll put it in like that. I gotta run my power wire down and up under here and it'll come through about right there. So I'm gonna use this kit from Stinger, this is four gauge. Since we're running less than a thousand amps, we're using four gauge wire. We already looked at the chart. Check out this chart. If you're ever running wires, you know, and you know how many amps or watts or volts you're pushing, always reference this depending on the length. It'll tell you exact gauge wire to use depending on all your statistics. So since we're running less than a thousand watts, this is going to be the perfect size power cord to run to the back of the truck. 
How I ran this Stinger 4 gauge is off of this fuse panel here. Here's the power wire going down. This one goes over to the upfitter switch power relay box. And then I pulled the inner wheel well to get better access and just kind of attached it to this harness that's going down into the back of the truck. The power wire is gonna come back up under here and then here's the bottom side of that connector that's underneath the passenger seat. So we'll get our crimp fitted onto here, do a couple heat shrink. Here's the quick disconnect from Maven Performance. We're up underneath here. We're gonna use a hydraulic crimper to crimp this down on here before zip tying it up along this harness here. So I've got my connector. I've got a hydraulic crimper here that I got off Amazon. There's a link in the description below where I got this. Oh, almost forgot my heat shrink out of a disaster. We've all done that, right? How many times have you crimped something and forgot to put heat shrink on it? Uh, lost count. Right. This is the only one I got from Maven. I usually do it two or three times. Make sure I got a real good crimp on there. Give it a little tug test. Yep, she's tight. But I'm gonna run this back once more a little further down. These firewall adapters for bulkheads are sick, aren't they? Yeah, like when you can use them, they're nice. Especially in like this scenario, where if you ever just need to kill the power, you just pull it off. Well, it just sucks trying to go through the firewall, especially when you do it with like a rubber grommet, you know? Yep, the nice thing is if the vehicle ever came in a manual, you have an open spot. Yeah. All right, now we'll heat shrink this on there. Get a nice tight connection. Good? Yep. So now we got our heat shrink together and just click her up on here. That's it. Just gotta zip tie it on. And there's our power wire ran. Pretty slick. I usually double up the heat shrink, one on the connector and one on the uh the metal itself that way it's just really sealed up and i really like this heat shrink that has adhesive in it it kind of squirts out some like hot glue and really this thing gets super hard which is what i kind of like for for connectors and then we'll just pop this right back up there and get our zip tied down and that should be it for the power wire all right i was running wire and i was saying to nate i'm like hey dude i think we need to run an accessory wire to turn it on and he said you don't actually, when you do the inputs from the speakers to the door, that is essentially its accessory power. So once it sees their sound coming through the speakers, it'll kick on. And then when you lock the door, it shuts off after about two minutes. So don't have to run an accessory wire. Really all you need is your power and then to tap into some speakers and you're ready to rip. So let's show you guys the install. So I'll say we'll probably stick it somewhere right over here or something like that. Okay. Oh yeah, we're gonna have plenty of room. Nice. Nice. All right, here's the amp. We got our power wires coming back here. We tapped into some speaker wire up here and soldered them in. And we have our power going to our subs. It still needs to be moved back into place. And then we're gonna secure it with these brackets on both sides here and over there. And then we are gonna put the seat back in and we're done. We'll fire it up. Nate and I got the final touches going on. I got these shelf brackets, shelf I got these shelf brackets off Amazon. So we're doing some threaded inserts into the box. I only got three out of the four because this one went in crooked and I really don't feel like screwing with it anymore. And then this will go to the seat mount under here. Getting real close here, guys. Nate and I just finished installing the seat lift. And I gotta say, I still have probably four inches or so above my head. I'm pretty impressed. We got the speaker box, sub box underneath the seats. It's looking really good. Time to fire this thing up. So pretty flush overall. You know, I mean, how many times are you putting your seat, your feet underneath the seat here? But flip it up for you. Clean, dude. Real clean.
I'll tell you what, it's super loud outside the truck. It sounds incredible and there's not a lot of rattling or anything going on out here. So, heck yeah, this is all sick. I love it. Well, that wraps it up, guys, for another episode of Teeth and Turbos. I'm super stoked about the build we did on this truck. I'm excited for more content to come. I hope you enjoyed this install. If you want to cop any of this stuff, I'm going to put a link in the description for everything that we used. Make sure you subscribe, like, leave me a comment. We'll see you in the next one. I'm so close to 100,000 subs, so help me out and click that sub button below. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've been wrenching on your car, need a 10 millimeter wrench, plowing a bag of flaming hot Cheetos and drinking a Dr. Pepper and realize, dang it, I really need to brush my teeth? Well, now's your chance. I'm talking Dr. Parker's 10 millimeter tool brush, a toothbrush on one end, a 10 millimeter wrench on the other. This sucker, CNC billet aluminum, baby. Lifetime warranty. Get them now at CletusMcFarland.com.